Hello everyone, Austin from Coding Pals here, and today we will be taking a look at the CCC 2020 Junior Problem 4, Cyclic Shifts. So, we'll start reading the question. Thok likes to find cyclic shifts of strings. A cyclic shift of a string is obtained by moving characters from the beginning of the string to the end of the string. We also consider a string to be a cyclic shift of itself. For example, cyclic shifts of ABCDE are ABCDE, BCDEA, and so on. Given some text T and a string S, determine if T contains a cyclic shift of S. The input specification tells us that um, the input will consist of exactly two lines containing only uppercase letters. The first line will be um, text T and the second line will be string S, and each line will contain at most a thousand characters. So for six out of the 15 available marks, S will exactly be three characters in length. So obviously we're going to try to, you know, aim for perfection and try to get this question completely right. So we're not going to pay too much attention about the length of S as we're let's just try to construct our code to accommodate any length. So output specification. So we just output yes if the text T contains a cyclic shift of the string S and then otherwise we output no. So we can just start coding now. So let's take care of the input first. So we know um, T is the first um first input so we'll write t and then s and put them both as strings so let's just create a a list right here to store all our um the all, all our shifts we're about to make so let's just um write a for loop and so that's a length of s and now is the tricky part we have to add all this sh all these shifts into the list and I just want to go over um, a bit more of advanced slicing. So we know that um, we know what happens if there's a number in front and there's a number in back, but we don't really know what happens if we just put a number in the front. So basically, if we put a number in front for slicing, that just means that it's characters from position two included to the end. And then if we do put it in the back, it's characters from the beginning to position two excluded. So I can just give you guys a really easy example. So we know A, B, C, D, E. And if you write two, then we get C, D, E, and A, B. So basically what we need to do in this problem is to combine C, D, E, and A, B, and just loop through all, um, all these numbers. So if we're doing A, B, C, D, E, then we're going to have a for loop up to like, you know, the length of the string. And then we're going to have all those shifts. So basically all these shifts. And the problem right now is that, you know, um, they're separated, they're not together. So basically we can come back to here and just add them together. And that should take care of like the hardest part of this problem, which is, you know, shifting the string list append, which will add whatever we want into the list. And basically we're going to add together, you know, basically what we did right here. So very simple. We're just going to go S I add and that should be it. So before we continue on with the problem, let's just test our code out. So if we print um, our current list right now, and we give that, we get the sample input. Yes, yeah, so we get exactly what we see right here. So now let's move on to the second part of the problem, which is determining of S's and T. So once again, um, we're gonna set up another for loop so for string in list if and in this problem something that would be very helpful is creating a boolean flag so essentially we can assign a variable you know true or false and then we can test to see if that condition is uh, met or not so let's just call this call x false so basically if string in T, then we will change this to true and then we can just break I don't know why I put a colon there and we can just break right there and using the information we have from the boolean flag we can just write if um, so yeah so if x is equal to false then we know that it's not um, the string is not in T so we can print no Otherwise, we can just print yes. 
So let's try out our first sample input before we submit to the online judge. And that gives us what we want. So let's just submit it now. And all those test cases are correct. So yeah, so that's it for this tutorial and uh, we'll see you next time.